Welcome to Glazing in Mrs. Morgan's Classroom. I'll try to keep this video short and sweet and specific to our options, but know that there are an endless variety of glaze types, colors, and ingredients, and it's a fascinating world to explore. In a nutshell, glaze is the paint of the pottery world. It's a combination of silica, clay, flux, colorant, and water that when applied to bisque pottery and fired in the kiln creates a glassy surface on the piece and makes it impervious to water. Once fired, the glaze is permanent. Before glazing bisqueware, always clean your piece off with a clean sponge and water. This helps remove any dust from the kiln or from sitting in the classroom and also helps clean off any oils from your hands. This little bit of moisture will also help your glaze not dry as fast when brushing it on because the pores of the bisqueware are filled with a little moisture. Use a damp sponge to wipe it down. Do not run it under the faucet. Next, you're ready to pick your glazes. Here in our classroom, our selection is limited due to budgeting, so choose from our shelves and sample chips. When it comes to selecting a paintbrush, choose a brush appropriate to the size you're working on. Bigger brushes will fill in larger areas, but can make messes in tight spaces. Detail brushes are good for edging and small details. It helps to have several choices ready at your workspace. Always check that your brushes are completely clean before using them. It is very easy for a lazy student to not properly clean their brush, and this shortcut can result in contamination of your work. When ready to glaze, you may run into some problems. First off, shake your glaze to ensure the ingredients are well mixed, but always make sure the lid is on tight. The heavier ingredients tend to settle down over time and water rises to the surface. When you go to open your glaze, it may be difficult. If the rims around our glaze pints are not kept clean, they dry inside the lid and make it difficult to open. Sometimes you can tap it on the table to break the dry glaze up and loosen the lid. If that doesn't work, run your glaze under warm water at the tap. Pressing the walls of the pint inward helps the water run under the cap and into the trouble area around the grooves. Give it a couple minutes and usually the water will soften the dried glaze and the lid will come loose. Once the lid is off, check the consistency of the glaze. It should be fluid enough to drip off a stirring implement, yet thick enough to cling. I'd compare it to a pancake batter. If it's too thick, we can fix this with a couple spoonfuls of water. Ask me, Mrs. Morgan, to help with a thick glaze. It's very easy to end up with too much water, which is very difficult to reverse. When ready to glaze, dip your brush in and apply it to the bisqueware. Try to brush it on as smoothly as possible. This can be challenging because the glaze dries very quickly on the porous surface and tends to go on rather chunky. I find it helpful to paint small areas and frequently pick up more glaze from the jar. As the glaze dries, it tends to be very pale colored. You can tell a recently painted area by the darker color from its moisture. Work carefully when at the edge of a section. Switching to a smaller brush will help you keep the color only where you want it. Each glaze needs two coats applied to have a solid, opaque color. I find it easier to quickly re-glaze areas I just painted. These areas will have more moisture left in the glaze, and thus the second layer will go on smoother than in a dried area. The challenge is to keep track of where you have painted once and where you have painted twice. Don't overglaze! More than two coats, or glaze that is applied much too thickly, 
will run off your piece in the kiln and drip onto the kiln shelves. Also try to brush smoothly and without air pockets because these can become pinhole bubbles and bare patches when the glaze liquefies in a firing. Always apply your glaze layer even and smooth. An important part of the piece not to glaze is the bottom part on which it stands. This part is called the foot. Try to avoid glazing this area. Brush carefully up to the bottom edge and stop. If you accidentally get any glaze on this part, you can wipe it away with a damp sponge, but traces of color will remain. We don't glaze the foot because this is the part it stands on in the kiln. A glazed foot would fuse to the kiln shelf in a firing, unless stilts are used to raise the piece up. Kiln stilts leave small blemishes where the metal points must be broken out of the glazed surface. When it comes to the smallest details, we have glaze detail applicators. These squeeze bottles have tiny metal tips for the finest of lines. Always make sure the tips are clean before use and after use, as they are easy to get plugged. Spoon a small amount into the bottle so as not to be wasteful, and pour back any remaining glaze when you are done. It's a good idea to test the bottle off to the side before use, to sense how thick the glaze is and how fast it will flow out. If you get glaze where it wasn't supposed to be, you can carefully scratch the top layer off with a cleanup tool, or gently wash it off with a stiff paintbrush. This option should be a last resort. Always try to prevent mishaps by brushing carefully, intentionally, and with an appropriate sized brush. As you glaze, keep an eye out for small bare patches that you have missed. These will become unsightly blemishes after firing and are easily preventable.